All right. Today, we're going to discuss portals and how they affect the source players. Portals are created several ways. The first that I want to talk about is portals that are created by clutter. Now, everything in this game has an etheric connection. This table in front of me, this couch I'm sitting on, the bed that I sleep on, the people outside, everything has an ether connection. Everyone has an ether connection. And when you have a surplus of things, of physical things in your environment, you are creating clutter and you are potentially creating portals in your home. If you have an excess of things collected in your home, whether it be items that you like, they are collectibles, or um, a junk drawer, or things in a closet that are being stored, or items that you no longer use that have no use to them anymore, or they just don't have a use, um, and you have trouble parting with them, they're broken, whatever the case may be. You have electronics that you have collected and you have not thrown them away. Listen, those things are not helping you. Having them in your home is not helping you. As I said, everything has an etheric connection to it. So if you have a collection of, say, broken electronics, this is going to create problems for you. You have a collection of Things like magazines, papers, uh, newspapers, just clutter. That's a problem for you. If you have a junk drawer with junk in it and clutter, that's a problem. If you have a big collection of stuff, like you collect action figures because you're a comic buff or whatever like that, that could potentially be a problem for you. And I know that people don't necessarily want to hear this stuff because they like their stuff. Yeah, no kidding. We all like our stuff, right? But those, those collections of things, useful or non-useful or collectible or value, you know, quote unquote valuable, all have etheric connections and they're all being housed in a place together and you have all these etheric connections that are collected in one spot and it creates a portal. And the, uh, the entities that have paid for the experience to be non-physical can pass through those portals and mess with the source players and mess with your life. That's number one. Number two, if you had spicy activities in your bedroom, your bed, most of us who have had um, intimate experiences, spicy experiences, have done so on our beds or wherever and that creates a big portal for you on your bed in that room <clears throat> that's something that needs to be addressed if you travel and you're sleeping in an airbnb or you're sleeping in a hotel you're sleeping in a bed that's not yours a lot of the times, people go to hotels to do spicy activities, right? Yes. So therefore, you have a place where you're sleeping where a lot of spicy activity from a lot of different people has occurred. <laughs> That's a big portal. So let's look at these scenarios. How do you get rid of the portals? Well with your intent, right? The first thing is, is if you are somebody in your own home and you've got things, like I said, you've got a surplus of things, you've got broken electronics, broken TVs, broken DVD players, broken VCR. I mean, I'm going back, but you know, broken phone, phone you don't use, peripherals, all kinds of computer peripherals, any, anything, any number of things, broken alarm clocks, broken phones, anything. That stuff needs to go. There is a market for those things, for parts. I'm just mentioning. 
okay? There is a market. eBay is a great place. Mercari is a great place. eBay is a really good place for that. I have gone to Goodwill, bought VCRs, and sold them for profit. Broken VCRs. I don't, well, I, I don't know if they were actually workable. You know, I know they powered up. I don't know what exactly was going on with the VCR, but at the end of the day, I put the make of the model. I told, you know, I disclosed everything and people bought them. And let me tell you, they bought them within like a couple of weeks. So those, mo those moved generally quickly. All right. But I've even sold cell phone boxes from my previous Androids. I've sold the boxes because people sell them or they use them for refurbs, whatever the case may be, they buy the boxes. These, there's a market for this stuff. So if you find that you have this broken stuff in your home, I highly recommend, first of all, that you sever the etheric connections from you and that, although that should have been done for you already, if it hasn't, um, you need to sever that yourself with your intent. You need to intend that you are cutting those ether connections from those things and yourself so that you are no longer attached to it and sell it or donate it or bring it to the town dump. A lot of the dumps have the, you know, tea leaf. Uh, kind of little shacks where take it's called take it or leave it, right? So where you can bring stuff to leave or you could take something that you like, or, you know, and the only reason why I'd ever say take something from there is if it's a useful item or if it's something that you can turn around and flip for profit, okay? So that's number one. And then close the portal in your house through your intent, Speak it. Speak that I intend to shut this portal down permanently and visualize it closing. Now, the other portals through spicy behavior. I spent my birthday in a hotel so that I can have alone time to shut out the outside world. I've been working crazy hours. I've been working a lot of hours. I've been go, go, go. I've been getting up at 5 a.m., leaving the house, getting to my destination by six. And I've been on this cycle for a couple of weeks. And I've also gone through a very stressful situation before that. So I did something special for myself, which was to spend alone time where I don't have to run anywhere. I don't have to talk to anybody. I don't have to see anybody. And I had a thoroughly good day. <laughs> However, as I later on remembered through the night before I went to sleep, but I remembered I didn't clear any of the ether connections. So at that point I did, I cleared the ether connections and I attempted to close the portal, you know? But again, hotel, spicy behavior is a regular occurrence by many people, right? So the portal could be very big, it could be very strong. Your first attempt may not close it down. So anyway, I went to sleep and um, actually there is train tracks behind here and up to a certain hour the trains were running. I'd say maybe two o'clock in the morning at the latest. Um, also the air conditioning, I could hear that clicking off and I'll never really get into a sound sleep in another environment unless I've been in it for several days and I become cognizant of the noises that I'm going to regularly hear. Otherwise, I am on high alert, even though I'm sleeping. So I kept hearing this, the, the clicking of the air condition turning off. So I would wake up and 
I had a couple of occurring dreams last night. And A, the fact that you're dreaming, you know, is an indication that you have done something that has expended energy out of your synergy cell, right? That's an, that's an indication of that because there's maintenance now being done on the body that is extracting the payment. However, the dreams that I were having were spicy in nature in the fact that so <laughs> when you are experiencing a dream and you're sleeping in a portal and there is an entity that is exploiting this, they are going to use things that are in your psyche of, say, the person that you find attractive, whether that be a celebrity, whether that be a person you know, they know what you find attractive, okay? If you want to equate it to the incubus succubus experience, that's a good way to look at it, right? A demon or an entity having a spicy experience with a source player in their sleep, However, they are cloaking their true nature by using something that would entice the source player to allow it to happen. Do you see what I'm saying? Because they know you find this person desirable. So... The fact that I had a dream experience with a celebrity that I find very enticing um, was the first clue. And not only did I have one, and it wasn't a full-on experience, but I had interaction in the dream. You know what I mean? Not not a spicy interaction, but it was going to go there. I woke up out of it and then went back to sleep and had another one of those with the same celebrity. But again, woke up out of it because other things were waking me up. So the connection gets severed, right? But when I woke up, I was like, oh, look at this. I didn't successfully close this portal down because I had these two experiences. So there was an entity trying to extract energy from me and, and to get that spicy experience in my sleep. And several months back, when I was just like a, when I had first moved into my brother's house and, uh, you know, sleeping in my niece's room and all of the stuffed animals and all of the clutter that shoved everywhere. I was sleeping right in the middle of one as well. And I was having spicy, spicy dreams and all kinds of weird erratic dreams that weren't even spicy, but just a lot of dreams where I knew I had not done anything that should have given me a dream like I, I knew that there were days that I had not done anything to expend synergy cell energy yet I was having those dreams okay and then I was like oh, oh I didn't close these portals I didn't close these portals I didn't do anything because honestly I was just so overwhelmed with the clutter so overwhelmed with what was going on in my life but um shut those down now I've also had different house sitting jobs and every time I go to a house sit I close portals I close portals and I banish the house entity because there was one house sit that I was at that in the middle of the night there was all kinds of activity happening now granted that house sit is a little cottage and actually I am pet sitting for the cat right now for the last two and a half weeks. Um, 
but when I was there, like I was there for a week and there was all kinds of activity happening at night. Now, granted, there are probably um, some woodland creatures running through the rafters in the house, in the cottage, <laughs> because even in the daytime, I could hear things like maybe acorns rolling across the floor. And I'm like, yeah, there's nothing up there. So it's in between the floors. But there were other things happening in there as well. So I made sure, oh, I'm going to banish the entity and I'm going to cl close down any portals that are maybe there. And I've done that. But I almost forgot to do that in this apartment, um, in this hotel room and was not fully successful in shutting down the portal. And therefore I had that experience. Now, again, it was not a full-blown experience, which I'm happy for because, you know, <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. But when I realized the celebrity that was in my dream, I was like, oh, these sneaky devils, these sneaky devils. So you have to be very aware of your surroundings in that respect, you know, and, and it's not just who is around you. It's the space you are in. And how is this space being used? This is not your space. You have not already cleared this stuff. So you're coming into a public use space that many people are paying the op for the opportunity to stay in. And they're doing all kinds of debauchery. How do I know? Because I used to live a very hedonistic life. I think we mostly all kind of have, right? Maybe at some point or somewhat of a normal quote unquote life where you had an intimate life with people. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, be very careful about the stuff. You also really have to examine what is it that is making you hold on to things that you cannot throw away, things that you are not using. What is it that's making you collect collectibles um, that only have value because somebody has told you they have value, right? I mentioned comic books. I mentioned action figures. That's a real thing. I know somebody that had quite a big collection of that. And it's a very real thing with some guys that are very big comic book buffs. Listen, I'm not saying that, you know, having a few of those things is bad. I'm not saying it's bad at all. I'm just saying you got to think about why is it that you are connected to that stuff. I used to have a collectible Barbie collection. And then I realized these things are never going to appreciate in value in my lifetime because it's a bunch of BS. At the time when Barbie, the Barbie explosion, the collectible Barbie explosion took place, I bought into the BS. My mother bought into it and she started buying me the Christmas Barbies. And then I realized th there's nothing intri intrinsically valuable about these. And I took them out of their boxes and I displayed them for several years. And then I realized, yeah, I'm done with this. I'm done with them. Yeah, some of them were designer. I'm, so, I'm done with it. I don't care. They're collecting dust and I threw them away years, excuse me, years ago. And I've always been like that. I've been like that for like 40 plus years. Well, 40 years about maybe less than that. So that 40 plus is in inaccurate. I've been that way for about 35, 36 years. As a teenager into my 20s, 30s, 40s, I've been that way. I, I prune my belongings all the time because I don't like looking at, ex at excess because I grew up in a house like that. Not hoarder hoarder like where you can't walk but a person who could not let go of broken items broken vacuums broken lamps broken furniture could not let go of it and it had no use and would have this whole thing where I'm gonna get it fixed and 20 years later it's still sitting in in the attic at the time you know so and then I saw my mother's health decline, and then as her health declined, her mental health declined as well, 
uh, or the mental health decline. It, it all kind of happened at once because it had to do with who she was living with and where she was living and not being prepared for the isolation and her life being different. Um, but also, you know, being housebound, that affects your mental health. And her acquiring things because she had nothing else to do but sit at home and watch shopping shows, but just acquiring stuff that she couldn't use and having hordes and hordes, tons and tons of clothes, A, that smelled so bad of cigarette smoke because the two of them were chain smokers, um, number one. It was discolored from the nicotine, number two, but you couldn't throw it away. And it was becoming too much. And I don't like it. I don't like that. I like, I know everything has a function. Maybe some of it is decorative, but it's not too much that's decorative. It pleases me to look at it and that's it. When there's an excess of stuff, I have to start pruning. And I even have one of those little storage units, um, the, the cubicle units with storage cubes. And for a while, those storage cubes were overflowing with things that because I had subscription boxes that had all the skincare, I had an excess of skincare. Some of it I sold on Poshmark, sold like tons of face masks and just various things. I was like, I'm never even going to use this in a year. There was so much stuff. So I got rid of some of it. And then as I started using some stuff, some of it I used up. Others, I tried it. I didn't like it. And I threw it away. So I've managed to cut down a lot of that. And then when I moved, I decided to throw some some stuff away so that my moving experience was minimal. You know, Um, I'm always doing that. I'm always doing that. And you have to get into that practice for yourself so that you have that minimis, minimal amount of items that are utilitarian to you and completely pleasing to you. If it's not something that you enjoy, it shouldn't be there. That's the bottom line. So keep these things in mind, especially if you are somebody who is traveling And you're sleeping someplace that is not your own. That these things, you got to do this. When you get there, you have to clear the entity. You have to close the portals. You have to clear the ether connections. So that means you should be of a good frequency, you know, higher enough frequency where you can actually effectively do that for yourself. And on that note, I'm going to leave you with that. And you have a great day. Be well and have your best life. All right. Bye.